about drones and obviously um, a lot of drones. He likes them. And he's going to tell you about them, but he can also tell you more about himself if he wants to add anything. As she said, I'm John. I'm really not hard to spot. I'm the guy in the kill. Welcome to my rabbit hole. This is one of the things that I got into this because I wanted to make a camera fly. And my wife calls it an obsession. I call it a hobby. Started out with this project right here. This is almost 20 years old. It doesn't fly anymore because the control board has a, a fault in it. It resets and it crashes. So it doesn't fly anymore. Going from there, like I said, this project turned all the way into well, this project. Much neater, much cleaner. The uh, flight control board is actually a modern flight control board. What you find in the uh, DJI Mat Matrix with the uh, Phantom 2s, one down here. I have a racing drone. I'm a horrible pilot with it. I don't fly it. It's not rocket science. I have a flying toolbox. You know, you can build these things out of just about anything. That's all it is. All the, all the same components, just I used a toolbox for a frame. And that's it. They get bigger. This is my commercial drone. This is a Sinistar 6. eBay, evil place. The previous owner flew it too close to a power line, sold it off for pennies on the dollar because he couldn't make it work. I replaced that receiver for $80, and now his $22,000 drone sits in my garage and it works. Oh, good. So you can show it. Yeah. One of those great garage barn finds. This thing is a monster to fly. It takes two pilots. You have one pilot, press controller, flying the aircraft itself. You know, it takes one pilot to fly the aircraft. This controller strictly controls the camera. You've got the camera, the gimbal, and you've got one pilot flying the, the upper half, one pilot flying the lower half. Good pilot. <laughs> you want a good pilot with this because you want it you know, slow, smooth, and steady. If you take any of the classes that are around it, like you know, I've taught once or twice and TXRS Labs does, this is what you'll end up building. This is a Flame Wheel 450. It is a very simple flight controller, four motor controllers. Obviously, you have four motors and a receiver. That's all you have to have. Battery tank. As a kit, it takes you about an hour to put it together, and it gets small. These are little little toys that we you know play around with every once in a while. You're about taking a flight to learn how to do it. Equally small, comes with its own little control. This is. What I fly most of. This is a Parrot Inaki. It is a 4K camera. It requires one pilot and about 15 minutes to set up. This thing requires all of that to fly. This little thing fits in this case. So, down and dirty, I can get 4K footage out of this thing. I can do roof inspections or I can follow colors. Right. Fold. What's that? Wing fold? Yeah, it folds down. Oh, I mean, the I guess the blades on the yeah. this one. The little thing fits in place right there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just kind of spin it around. Fold it up. Um, are there any people who are looking to develop? You want to get into the development side of this? Because that's where I got started in all of this. I know how the how the receivers talk to each other, how the flight control boards work, what the sensors, you know, what the languages the sensors speak. If that's not what you want and all you want to do is learn how to fly a camera, I can do that too. I'll give you a book up here on my track board, my his lessons, and we can do that. 
Are you opening? Are you saying you're opening the floor to questions? Yes. What's the speed on your code? Parent one is actually software limited to. Um, you can unlock it in software. It defaults to that. Um, main reason is is you know these things are quick. Push the push the throttle over on this thing and it will disappear. Um, the two fifty racing drone that is eighty miles an hour of unadulterated fun. Unlike video games, when you crash with that thing, you sweep up your parts and you go home. Video game, you push a button, another one pops up. Let's see. Phone to boot up, which means all this is going to boot up. Does it don't have optimization? This one does not. It what it does have on the bottom, this is what keeps it stable, is actually a flow sensor. Same thing that you'd find on the bottom of a mouse. There's a little sensor like that. It's looking at the ground, and that's how it actually maintains its location. If it doesn't have a good GPS signal or something like that, that's what it'll use to maintain the signal. This one does. Not the old ones. Not the old ones. The old it, ones don't. That one has auto follow if you put it in trouble. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Which drone would you recommend with auto follow if you come on? I have a eight one eight sunk out call. It's something like the Paradinafi. I played around with the follow me the the follow things out at our training field. It happened in the fire department. We were out at the training field. I locked onto one of the trucks and I had it following the truck all over the place. I set the controller down and just watched it follow the truck all over the training field. I didn't have to do anything. Does it dictate its critical mass? Is that weird? Um, you've got about a twenty-five minute flight time. So however long that is, and GPS in an urban environment is really kind of sketchy. Uh, this has got a really good GPS in it. Let's this thing real quick. Something too is if you're at an event, it would be illegal to have the drone flying. Yeah, the FAA does not like us flying over people. Props. It'll stay right there. I can feel the breeze. Yeah, that's it. You know, you fire it up and walk away from it. Don't you tell it to do something. <laughs> it's staying right there. Yes, right. Now, this is extremely useful at these things. Back with the camera, I like the air support. Can you bump it with your hand forward and it'll, it'll go back to the same position or what? No, no, never tried. Yes, sir. <laughs> I said, never tried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be for wind maintenance, mm -hmm. right? John, have they started to put out the uh, the props that uh, the the ones that look like figure eights that uh, MIT published recently? There are yeah, there's two new props that are coming out on the market. They are toroidal in nature. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That one is kind of an enclosed prop. These are just straight blade props. We borrowed these from the the airplane guys. Borrowed these from the airplane guys because we didn't have anything else to go with. This was all new territory. Come to find out, we reinvented the wheel. One of our guys, when we were doing the, uh, the flight loop on it, and one of the guys from JPL was like, I think I've seen this somewhere before. He went to the archives, came back, said, is this what you're trying to do? And he posted up this little snippet of code. 
He went through it, looked at it, and was like, yeah, that's exactly what we're trying to do. But what's this giant number here in the middle? Oh, that's the main rocket motor. For what? The lunar lander. Like, oh, this is lunar lander code. Like, did you try taking all of that thrust and farming it out to the RCS thrusters? Nope, didn't try that. I said, so, well, let's give it a try. So we took all that thrust away from the main rocket motor, put it at zero, and all the thrust out to the RCS thrusters, and it actually flies on that control board right there. It is actually running the lunar lander code for stabilization. That's the history lesson. Same thing that Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. Very funny. <laughs> Forty something years later, we reinvented the wheel. If you believe in that, if you believe no. in that, <laughs> most of us here do. I know. I'm just. Um, can't think of anything else. Like I said, do you have any specific questions? Like I said, I know how. You know, beginning to end. Yes, PID is used for most of it. Um, the sensor fusion itself, all you have to have to make this thing fly is a gyroscope. You have to have three of them, one facing up, one facing forward, one facing left or right. And that gives you three, four, three points of reference. You calibrate it for level, and it will come up and stay in that position. You use the controller to tell it tilt forward, tilt backwards, left or right. The gyros will actually you know, figure out how to do that and hold that position. Once you bring it back to level, it'll keep going with inertia. If you put an accelerometer in there, now you've got two things. You know if you're moving forwards, backwards, left, right, up, or down, but you also have a reference to which way is down. Most people don't realize we are actually accelerating at the ground at 1G. And if you look at the output of your sensor, there is always 1G going straight down to the center of the engine. Use that as you know that is your level point. If you want an absolute reference, you put a magnetic compass in there. And now you know which way is magnetic north. Problem is, this building is magnetic north. <laughs> you guys didn't get to see it on my display here. It says you know magnetic disturbance. And I don't have a good lock in here. I can't use any automatic functions. I can't do the follow me inside this building because it can't get all the information it needs to do that. You take that, then you go into your GPS field. You know where you're at in space. You know what your orientation is. Now you want to know where you are in the planet. So you put your GPS in there with it. And now you've got waypoints. You've got access to waypoints, altitudes, follow me functions. And after that, you do with the camera. You pump the, put the camera in through the, the flight algorithm. So you see your... Subject drift off to one side. Automatically put. Helps to have both. You know, the, the sensor fusion itself is all designed around those three sensors. Okay. You know, gyroscopes first, the accelerometer second, the compass third. And you add the GPS on top of it, and it gives it that, that much more information. Most people don't realize GPS data is actually big. Um, yeah, one meter. This this drone right here uses an older GPS signal for it, and if I just set it like I did with this one, if I just set it to a hover like that, it'll drift one meter, up, down, left, right, forward, back, one meter cube, and it'll sit there and run around in that one meter cube. That's just the the sensitivity of that GPS. If I upgraded the GPS, I might get better. I haven't gotten that far yet. So having the the full flight, I know there's two kind of rotors. Yes. But having the two rotors with the holding. You actually spin one set up, and slow one set down. So if you want to yaw left or yaw right, you actually use the torque. You're counter rotating the propellers, you slow one set down. Now you've got full torque, one set of propellers. Mm -hmm. It is. It's like I said. This little drone right here is very locked in. They, these guys have tuned this flight loop over and over and over until they have it down exactly right for this particular machine. 
this one right here is a little bit sloppier. You know, it's you know it doesn't react as fast. Lots more inertia. Smaller drones like this, you know, this thing right here, you flick it and it's gone. <laughs> it just disappears. How many drones you got, Tony? At my worst, I had seventeen. Now I'm down to fifteen. <laughs> now this is pretty much the collection. I've got the Sinistar, the Parrot, like I said, the the Granddaddy down here. Like I said, this one doesn't fly anymore. Um, the toolbox flies. That one flies. One more at home, which is a Scorpion frame. It was one of those I never meant for it to fly. It was a really cool looking frame. It's shaped like a scorpion with six blades in it. And I crashed a crash one of my hexacopters, took all the parts off of it, put it on there, and it flew so well I left it together. Anafi. Current generation retails for about seven hundred dollars. eBay on this one, I'm not sure the first thing, but I paid them like two fifty for this thing. So if you know what you're looking for, if you know someone who knows what they're looking for, we can get you a good deal on that. Like I said, the current generation of this one for the base model is right around six or seven hundred dollars. You can push that all the way up to about twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars, depending on camera systems, altitude license. This drone right here is actually locked in to five hundred meters away without software input. So you know, if I have a license from what was in Germany and they built it, they'll let you go up to two kilometers out. You know, off the shelf and only has five hundred meters. Line of sight is where the FAA would love you to stay. But with the camera systems that we have now, we went far beyond line of sight. So having other things, all the all the equipment that you see over here, the laptop actually has a receiver on it for aircraft control. You know, you get a notification over there that hey, there's aircraft in the area. Keep your eyes open. If I'm up there in their way, then I'm in their way. You know, it's up to me to get out of the way. And aircraft have a right of way. The strange thing is, where I live, I am within the five mile radius of Laporte Field. I'm 4.7 miles away. I have to call them up and say, hey guys, I've got a drone up in the air. Please caution. They don't care. It's a private municipal field. All the pilots out there are. Cessnas and that size, they don't care. I'm six miles away from Ellington Field. I have the combat air patrol so close I can read the pilot's name on his, you know, on his flight jacket. They're in my airspace all the time, but I don't have to notify them because they're six miles away. You just have to maintain your situational awareness. That's why I think you, if you're flying. In the goggles, you know, I've got goggles too. These are my the ones that I take out and show the, the kids. It's called a Cyclops. It's like a, a cell phone screen inside of it. I do have a set of good fat sharks that give you a stereoscopic vision. The, but, with uh, a monos but with a monoscopic camera? Yes. You can get dual camera systems. Where they actually have it set up, you know, about that far apart, so that it looks almost exactly, you know, you would be looking out of the windshield of the aircraft. Didn't you used to have a Larson scanner on the yellow one? Yes. I think that's that should be on all drones. Well, you it's know, it's mandatory. I, I disagree I, with you, but I didn't bring the Larson scanner with me to the field. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, uh, kind of tell somebody's age by where they know the Larson scanner from. It's either a Cylon from the old Battlestar Galactica or Kit. A little red light going back and forth. That's a Larson scanner. It is named specifically for Gary A. Larson, the writer of those two shows. They named it after him. 
doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't do anything. No, it just looks cool. It does. It's different. So at what point do you have to register your drone if they just want to hang out? Anything bigger than they. This one, actually, I have to register because the battery is actually too heavy. So anything bigger than that is supposed to be registered with the FAA. So wait, is it by weight or by size? By weight. Uh, this is 320 grams. The weight limit is 250. I barely missed the mark with this one. The drone I see is for commercial use. Yes, for the commercial use. Show you that slide. Wake up. Okay. We have all the cameras, all the different displays here. reason that I, I give this to the kids, it's been dropped already. <laughs> yeah, if you pass that around, you can see what, see what the pilot sees, you know. With this drone, I have two camera systems. There's a camera up on the front for the pilot. You can also pull a live feed off of this camera down here, so that the, the cinematographer can actually see what this camera sees. With this controller, you have full control over where the camera looks and where it focuses. Yeah. Couple of other options too. You can do uh, take complete control of the camera with focus, iris, zoom, white balance, all that. It's all programmable from the from the control. Lots of stuff goes into that one. Everything's automatic on this one. Put it up in the air, put it up through the through the cell phone, frame your shot, hit the record button. The computer does the rest of the work. <laughs> no, no, but it did stop for ten seconds. Yes, it did. Ten seconds. So, on a scale of uh, the damage to my arm is not coming down, how much damage would that do if the drone wouldn't come down? This little guy? You might scratch an eye. <laughs> this guy will take your fingers off. Um, this guy right here? Yeah. Crawled up my leg one day. <laughs> I came up off the ground and it hit me right in the leg, and all I heard was motors time out before it punched through the skin. Rolled up to here, the motors timed out, and then it punched through the skin. And it got up to about my hip before I knew it. They're powerful. <laughs> uh, again, I'm a paramedic. I knew how to bandage myself. <laughs> Pilot's view. That's not, the, not the camera operator. Not the camera operator. So is it a different view for the... Not real. Okay. It looks so, al almost exactly the same. So, so if, the, if you're flying the drone, the camera operator is swinging that thing, the motor takes it out. It's not changing the pilot. No. More power. Have that motor. It's more power. There's this arrangement, you can lose one motor and have a controlled cut. Whereas with the quadcopter with four blades, you lose a motor, it just tumbles out of the sky. You can't fly two blades? So just the yeah. Well, this can lose one. If you have an octocopter, as long as you don't lose two motors on one arm, because you can land the aircraft. Like I said, this is the one I give the kids, and it's been dropped. And that's why. You know, I don't give them my $300 prop charge. These things are like 40 bucks. They're, they're cheap. Yeah, this also is something that I built specifically for doing work like this. Oops. What's the chirping for? Chirping, it's doesn't have a GPS signal, and I haven't calibrated it in a long time. It wants me to calibrate it. Oh, yeah. 
saw me with Travis sitting back there. Yeah, that's the guy right there. You saw me when I was sitting there calibrating this one. When I was spinning it around, that's what I was doing. I was calibrating. And it's, you have to do the exact same thing with that one. It's just a little bit more work. Can you spin that whole thing apart? Um, actually, you take the whole thing comes apart. That's the aircraft itself. You can probably fly that by itself. Really you can't. Yeah. Um, I have just a set of landing gear that pops onto that post right there. Same way as this does. I guess you can only take it from while the it's actually, just stays still. Yeah, it's actually flying. Now the camera operator can do that. This aircraft just stays built. Camera stabilizer. See how that camera's always looking in the same place, no matter what I do? That whole gimbal down there does the same thing. This little thing. Always looks at the horizon. Is it fixed or is it? Yeah, it's fixed. It's right. with the old one. Yeah, you get all the feels out of that one. It's like riding a roller coaster. It'll make you see some things. A lot of the a lot of the drones like this, you know, they'll stabilize at least the horizon, so it's not quite so bad. Yes, remote ID. The FA Europe already has it. They've already finalized all their their rules and regulations for it. The FAA still hasn't done it. It was supposed to go into effect in February. What kind of drone does it cost to bring it off the base? You can buy a module. All it is is a Bluetooth transmitter. That's all you have to have to make sure get yourself in the compliance. Bluetooth transmitter. They, there's companies out there that make them now. You just plug it into the you know, portal, this little receiver right here. Plug it into there, it gets power, and it starts squawking, it's, you know, squawking whatever numbers you would need. I have a module for this one and a spare module for if I want to fly that one or something like that. The, the parrot, it's actually built in, but it uses the French key, which is not compatible with the American keys. <laughs> so it squawks in French. If you're using, if you're only doing hobby class stuff, if you're flying for yourself, fly, flying for fun, one is all you need. You don't need you know, aircraft or anything. But each commercial unit has to have its own. Those, that is swarm logic, and that's about where my skill set stopped is when I started doing the swarm logic stuff. It's fascinating to see how they did it. <laughs> PFM, yep. <laughs> you know what PFM is? Air freaking mass. Ah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Oh, yes. Is there any possibility of Skynet taking these things over? <laughs> um, in as much as they can take over your phone. The phone can be used to fly this. I can take this controller, turn it off, and fly it with the camera. So as much as they can take the phone over, yeah, they could. With something like this, no. <laughs> something that small, no. Uh, the older drones are frequency locked in, within themselves, so there's really not a lot that you can tell.
take over. I did have one guy you know, interrogate me when I was flying this one around. He goes, what frequency sets are you using? There's seven different frequencies coming out of this thing. And any one of those I can use to take control. So he was looking to how to disable the drone. So these are standard hobby class receivers. These are 2.4 gigahertz. So this thing is your you know, you want to wash this out with you know the drone gun carrying it. You also wash out the life line. Do that, it's obvious because now everybody knows how to sell things to you. <coughs> this right here uh, retails for $22,000. Retails, yeah, without the camera. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, without the camera. Whoever somebody tries to disable your drone by throwing something at you, they're becoming stock receivers. Yes, they are. That's the wonderful thing about the new 107 rules. We are authorized aircraft for international airspace. And if you shoot us down, it's like shooting airplanes. You know, the scenario that I would give people when they say, you know, early on it was that, you know, Amazon's going to deliver packages. Yeah, skeet shooting with prizes. You know, that's how somebody described it. I'm like, you know, that that's a, a wonderful thing, but most people don't realize, oh, there's a drone over my house. I shot it down. Well, that drone is taking pictures of your neighbor's house because they're about to sell. You know, that kind of thing. You know. And I take that whole scenario out to an inevitable conclusion of you killed somebody. Now you're responsible for that killing. All because they're operating legally over the top of your house. Like I said, the drone's over you. They're not looking at you. Looking at your neighbor. The drone's over your neighbor. They're probably looking at you, and you can't shoot them down because they're over you. One of the reasons we have the vests here, these bright yellow vests that say FAA licensed drone pilot. Don't disturb me. I'm busy. I'm working. Somebody tap on my shoulder. Hey, what are you doing? Where are you at? <laughs> so leave us alone. We're working right now. As soon as you see us land, then come talk to us. The big orange thing. Yeah, stay away from it because you see this one is a little bit small for this drone. <laughs> Nothing else as far as I have any other questions. If you want to talk more about PIDs, we can. But you seem to be the only one who's really curious as to how the thing you know, works internally. Okay. Absolutely. Like I said, these things are a lot of math. I understand the stuff that comes into one side of that equation. I understand what's supposed to come out the other side of that. Fiddly parts in the middle, that's you. <laughs> like I said, the fiddly parts in the middle, that's you. Like I said, I'm not a rocket scientist, I'm a paramedic and a firefighter. <laughs> this is just a hobby. You know, and you're going to have to work with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I said, that's my other hobby. When I, when I retire, that's what I want to end up doing with my life. I'm done with fire and EMS, you know, I'm, I'm done being the guy in charge. I want to be a camera operator. Give me that any day. Editing is okay, <laughs> but I'd rather go out and shoot. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thirty-four minutes.